I'm not gonna lie to you. I always feel like a little bit of a D-bag saying the sentence that I'm about to say to you. I've had a successful online business for close to a decade now. I feel like a D-bag saying that because I know how many people make claims about being successful online or being a guru or being an influencer. And a lot of those times I have seen people make those claims and come and go. I've seen a lot of online businesses crash and burn despite having large social media followings, a really engaged audience, super high revenue claims, industry authority, and a really strong personal brand. And it used to always surprise me. How could this happen? What went wrong? But now I know, after being in this industry for so long and being an entrepreneur for so long, I can diagnose exactly what tends to happen. And the truth is, a lot of businesses that start today will be gone tomorrow. The averages when it comes to business failure rates are higher than you think. And nearly 50% of businesses actually fail within the first five years of being open. So if you want to avoid being a statistic, then I highly recommend you continue watching this video. The first thing that's really sneaky that kills most businesses is allowing the external to dictate the internal. What do I mean by that? Well, the old way of starting a successful business was to look at the market, identify demand, and use that to decide the niche of your business. Look at what's working for other entrepreneurs and business owners and copy their niche. Look at the current trending issues or problems that you can solve and build a business around it. But all of those things are based on external demand. So if you build a business around external demand and not based on internal alignment, this is what happens. It will not have longevity. You won't be able to sustain your own interest or excitement about it. And the business won't be viable if it's based on a short-term trending issue or platform. So what I've identified is that a really successful business has to be based on two key factors. Number one is internal alignment. So it has to come from you, your expertise, your experience, and the things that you're most interested in. And number two is it has to be based on a basic human need. One without the other doesn't work. So to put it in really simple terms, What's a problem that you want solved or have solved for yourself? That is a great place to start when it comes to building a business that you're gonna be able to sustain and you're gonna be excited to continue to grow. And when it comes to basic human needs, you can always just go back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This paints the picture of the needs that really any successful business in the world has to satisfy, whether it's one of these or a combination of them. It's either gonna be the basics like physiological needs, air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and reproduction, or it's gonna be safety needs like personal security, employment, resources, health, and property, or love and belonging, friendships, intimacy, family, a sense of connection, esteem, respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, and freedom, or self-actualization, desire to become the most that one can be. And when you build a business strictly on external demand only, without any sort of alignment with how you're actually wanting to grow the business and what you actually have an interest in, you're creating so much unnecessary friction in being successful. And what I have noticed is it creates this out of alignment pressure cooker that ultimately breaks you and your business. And that looks like you choose a niche or a topic or a product for your business that's completely out of alignment with what you're interested in. So it takes way longer and it's way harder to get it off the ground. This leads to panic and scarcity because you're having an issue with actually growing it, which leads to attracting bad clients or the wrong clients who you ultimately end up resenting, which then it leads to financial stress because you're attracting clients, but maybe they're not paying or you don't like them. So you're ultimately refunding them and you're just not attracting any of the right clients at all or enough clients to get by, which leads to a copyable or crappy offer or product because you just simply are trying to create something and hope it sells which leads to toxic relationships with both the clients and also the people in your internal world because you're under so much stress and pressure, which leads to burnout and depletion and the burning down of your business. This might be hitting close to home, and if it is, I'd love for you to tell me in the comments. In addition, I've actually created a guide so you can avoid these four mistakes, and it's gonna be including what I'm talking about in this video, so you have it for reference. If you want that, comment below with give me the guide. The second issue is focusing on the wrong numbers, and this happens all the time in the online space, and it is 
infuriating. What I mean by this is that you're focusing on vanity metrics and followers and subscribers instead of the metrics that actually matter to the growth and longevity of your business. There are five key metrics in your business that lead to longevity and sustainability. And they are leads. You need to know the number of leads you need in your business to actually create consistency. You have to know how many sales you need to make to break even and then to profit. You need to know how much cash flow is coming into your business on a month to month basis, not revenue. And you need to know how much profit you're actually making to reinvest back in the business and ultimately create runway so that you have a security blanket in your business. If anything were to go sideways or if anything were to break or if things weren't as successful as they were in the beginning, you have some buffer room to play with. Knowing these numbers inside and out allows successful entrepreneurs to weather any storm. They can get through a recession, they can get through pretty much anything because they know that they're secure in their business and they're agile enough to pivot if necessary to meet the market demand. And why I say you need to know cash flow and not revenue is because revenue is kind of like monopoly money. People make big revenue claims in their business, but revenue does not necessarily mean cash in the bank, cash collected. So you could say, I got a $100,000 contract, but the person is only paid via a payment plan, so I've only generated $10,000 of cash in the bank. And what that does to you is it makes you a realist in your business, and you have to be a realist to really look at how you can get by on a month to month basis and also grow from there. You need to know what you really have on hand to determine every decision you make in your business from hiring to operations, to systems, to investing. You have to know the actual cash amount in your business, not the contracted revenue you're expecting. And the reason profit's so important, which goes without saying, is that if you are spending $100,000 and making $100,000, you don't have any flexibility. You're breaking even. That is not a profitable business. And profit at the end of the day is what creates peace in your business. So lowering expenses, being mindful of your expenses, allows you to be very, very, very smart when it comes to the finances of your business. And when you lose sight of the numbers that actually matter in your business, you make really dumb decisions and do really dumb things. And I'm speaking from experience here, <laughs> truly. And also watching a lot of people do this. It can show up as doing things like just creating more products and creating more offers, hoping that's gonna solve your problem. It can look like overcomplicating your business. It can look like hiring a bunch of people you don't need, which just depletes your cash flow and depletes your security in the business. It can be trying to master new platforms and create more content instead of focusing on the one platform or the kind of content that actually generates a return for your business. It could be thinking you need more, more, more. And what this does is it creates what I call horizontal scaling versus vertical scaling. And what that means is that you're ultimately spreading yourself thin and you're going this way with your business. You're going wide instead of being able to scale to the moon by keeping things incredibly simple. Simplicity scales, complexity creates chaos. And I wanna map this out for you. A very simple marketing strategy that we actually implement in our own business and some of our clients who are doing a couple hundred thousand dollars a month in their businesses, their marketing strategy is as simple as this. They have one core offer, which is a transformative online course. They have one main source of lead generation. So that could be as simple as a YouTube channel. And then they have one asset that they own in terms of their audience. And that could be their email list. So the combination of email and YouTube creates consistency month over month. And then they have a sales mechanism. So they have a way to convert their traffic into consistent sales. And where this also brings me is that another factor that I've seen kill a lot of businesses is believing that short-term success equates to long-term success. And most often this happens when you have an existing audience and you create a product or a course or any sort of offering and you sell it to that existing audience and you get sales, you get buyers because you've built trust with these people. But then you try to sell consistently and nothing happens. You have no new buyers, you have no new clients. 
So short-term success does not dictate long-term, especially in the online space. And just because you have an audience does not mean that you have what you need to create consistency in your business in the long term. You have to know how to generate new leads. That is rule number one to creating a business that will not die or fizzle out. So in any business, to combat this, you have to focus on four daily priorities. Number one, first and foremost, you have to focus on sales. What are you doing every single day to generate sales in your business? Because sales are the lifeblood of the business. Number two, quality control. So your product, your offer, if it's not great, it will not stand the test of time. So constantly iterating and constantly going, is this the best I can make it? Number three is social proof. Are you getting results? Are you getting testimonials for the people who are investing into your product? And that is a huge key to long-term growth because that proof allows you to scale and allows you to enroll more people into your offer, your course, your product, because there's actual viable success behind it. And then profitability. Are you profitable? Do you have cash in the bank that you know is a security blanket for you that you can reinvest when you need to or that you can use in case things slow down at all in your business to allow you time and freedom and space to really be thoughtful and proactive about your next move? And I wanna share this with you because I've seen this happen so many times and I like to call it the downward spiral of entrepreneurial self-sabotage. And what it looks like is this. Once you start to gain a little success and it's new territory and often what you've dreamed of, you take on more and more and more while being spread thinner and thinner and thinner. You gain success in your business and authority, which leads to an increase in opportunities and demand on your time. And that very growth and success that you craved so much becomes the very thing that distracts you from your insatiable focus that led to your success in the first place. And if you ever utter the words, it can't be this easy, it is a warning sign because as you get distracted and unfocused because of your newfound success, you lose sight of what actually matters in your business. And when the business suffers, you think seeking out more, more, more is the key to getting back on track, which only leads to more vicious cycle of defeat, disappointment, destruction, and distress. And that ultimately leads to burning the business to the ground. Again, if this hit home for you and you want it for reference, I do have a guide that I've created that walks you through all of this. Just comment in the comments below with give me the guide. I hope this was a good warning for you because this happens all too often and I really want to help you avoid it. Take it from someone who has been there, done that, made a ton of mistakes, had to pivot, had to learn a lot of lessons along the way, but has been able to create a really, really sustainable and successful and peaceful business for nearly a decade now in this crazy online world. So. Appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to let me know with your comments below. Comments are my love language, so I love to hear your takeaways. Make sure to subscribe for new videos on Tuesdays, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.